Okay, we're going to start looking at chapter 3. We're going to start by visiting our measures of central tendency, which will sometimes be referred to as measure, measures of center also. And our three measures of central tendency are the mean, the median, and the mode. Now one thing to keep in mind is all three of these terms can be referred to as an average. So from a statistical point, if somebody says they have the average, it is not specific as to if it's the mean, the median, or the mode. Now from a common standpoint, if there's somebody out on the street talking about the average, what they're talking about would be the geometric mean here. And in order to find your mean, you add up all the numbers together and then divide by however many you added. Now the median is the middle of the numbers. Think of it like a road. The median of the road is in the middle. Well, the median of a set of numbers is the middle number. So you would line your numbers up from smallest to greatest and then figure out which one is in the middle position. Now let's say you have a list of numbers and when you put them in order, okay, you get down here and you have two numbers. So there isn't just a single middle number. Well, if this is the case, you add your two numbers up. So in this particular one, it would be 5 plus 7 is 12, and then divide it by 2. So our median for this set right here would have been 6. That only happens if you get down to where there's two numbers. There's not just an individual middle number. And then our last one here, the mode. The mode is the number that occurs most frequently. So whatever number is repeated the most is the mode. There can be multiple modes. So if you have a couple of numbers that each happen five times, you can have multiple modes. Or if nothing is repeated, then you could have no mode. So here's our first set of numbers. I've already put them in order for you. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find what the mean, the median, and the mode are. All right, for the mean, I added up the string of numbers and I got 77. Then I divided by 9 because there was 9 numbers I was adding up, and I got my mean to be 8.5 repeating. Then my median, I started at the top and the bottom and started um, crossing numbers out, found out my middle number was 8. And then my mode, the number that happens most frequently, well, 3 happens twice and 13 happens twice, so we have two modes for this one. Okay, here's another one. So go ahead and do the same thing. Pause the video, see what you come up with for the mean, the median, and the mode. Start with the mean. I added all my numbers up, got 78, then I divided by 8, because there was 8 numbers I added, end up getting my mean to be 9.75. The median, this was an example of one where it came down to two middle numbers. There isn't just one middle number. Added them up and got 19. Divide that by 2. Got 9.5 for the median. And the mode, 4 is the only one that is repeated twice. So that one would be the mode. We're going to look at a little bit of notation now. That's what's going to be coming up. This number, hopefully you recognize from Excel. That's that auto sum button that we've used a couple of times. Well, this is the Greek letter sigma, and it's often referred to as summation notation. And what it really means is to add everything. So if here's our example, it says let x represent the number of house, house plants a group of people have. And so here's our responses from the people we asked. It says we use x sub i to represent the ith observation, so x sub 1 would be equal to our first observation, which is 0. x sub 2 would be equal to our second observation, and x sub 3 would be our third observation. Now, depending on how the people answered, in what order, these numbers can be different. It's just a way for us to indicate which one we're referring to. So if we look at how summation notation would be used, if we saw sigma x sub i, what that means is to add up all of the observations relating to x. So we would add up x sub 1, x sub 2, 3, sub 4, x sub 5, x sub 6, x sub 7, and x sub 8. We would add them all up. 
that is notation that we're going to be using. So when you see sigma, that means to add everything up. The reason we're getting into that is because when we look at our sample mean, now sample mean is denoted by an x with a bar over top of it, and it's actually called x bar. And our formula has the sigma notation in it. So what this is telling me is to add up all of my x values. So add up all of my observations and then divide by n. Well, n is the number of observations. So this is just a way of writing how we find our mean. So here's a, an example. It's monthly tornado touchdowns in the US and there's all my data. So if I wanted to find the mean, the sample mean, because this is only for one year, I would use x bar, x bar is equal to sigma notation with that x sub i divided by n. Well now my n is going to be one, two, should be 12. Because there's 12 observations. So I still have to go through the same steps. I still need to add all of those numbers together and then divide by my 12. So this question wants me to find the mean, the median, and the modes of the monthly tornado touchdowns in the US. So using this idea of our formula for sample mean, see if you can find each of these three things. So since my summation notation tells me to add, I added up all of my values here and got 941 divided by the 12 values there are, divide by that n, and I got 78.4 for my mean. Then to find my median, my numbers were not given to me in order, so the first thing I did was I reordered them down here from smallest to biggest, and then found my middle two numbers were 68 and 86, found the mean of those two, so I added them together and divide by two, and my median turns out to be 77, and there was no mode on this one, nothing was repeated.